Really cool thing, on Fridays I do trade reviews. That's what today is, Friday. Therefore, I chose a trade review from out there on the real life trading community to talk about, discuss, analyze, break down, and segment about what we could have done good, better, great, bad, and all in between. Hope you enjoy this trade review. Hey traders from around the world. My name is Jeremy Alexander Newsom, and I am with Real Life Trading com. Our mission is to enrich lives with mentally liberating education. Make sure you go over to reallifetrading.com and click on live class because we do have a free program coming up for the entire world. If you click on live class, April 27th through May the 1st, I will be personally hosting, teaching, and providing content based on technical analysis. It will be all inspiring, stupendous, and sensational. So make sure you click there and register. Also, if you want some information um, on this particular course, you can also text me. Go ahead and text RLT to 55444 if you're here in the United States of America, and I'll send you some really, really cool stuff. All right, as you know, today is Friday, which means we're doing a trade review, and the trade review we're gonna be doing is on AMD. The reason I wanted to pull up AMD is I wanted to talk about a particular trade that a real life trader has placed, and this particular real life trader is fast approaching for the Rookie of the Month badge from RLT, uh, Mr. Chris Rimbolt. Now, he's no rookie in life or in sales or in money making, but in trading, he is simply newer and he's been absolutely on fire. So here's the trade that Chris Rimbolt took. Let's go ahead and kind of zoom in and talk first about why he took this particular trade. So he played call options on AMD and he got into those calls on this day right here. So this day specifically is the 13th of April and he sold some calls on the 14th of April. So what would have made him buy calls on AMD? Let's walk through it. So specifically, uh, Monday he bought 515 calls with a 50 strike for $3.40, and on Tuesday uh, he sold those for 590. It was a 5.6 R trade, and his R is 190. So he played this one really, really well. Let's just kind of talk why through why he would have done that. So first and foremost, if we're just looking at the candle, let's just analyze some candlesticks, and we can take off the moving averages and everything right now for just a moment. Just look at pure candles. So first and foremost, if we're looking at candles and just some analysis from the chart, what type of gap is this right here, ladies and gentlemen? This is a retest gap, exactly from March 23rd to March 24th. So what did we do on the stock? Well, we actually did, we retested the gap. So weird when that happens. So we've retested the gap, we filled the gap, and then the next day, boom shakalaka, huge, bullish candle one white soldier and look at what it does it closes above this bearish candle closes above this bearish candle trapping the bears right next day makes a higher high and a higher low next day makes a higher high this is what's classified as a new white soldier white candle opening and closing with the prior day black candles close next day you get a bearish candle but check out the bearish candle it actually made a higher high and higher low and the next day you got some bullish follow through so if you're looking at an, any type of you know an hourly any type of intraday time frame here's what the hourly chart looks like so if we're zooming into the hourly we can kind of see some decent strength if we draw a support resistance line you'll really notice that this pivot price right here we did get above that pivot, we retested it, we kept making higher lows, we pulled back and bounced, and it was one of those buy the dip situations. The trend at that point in time was arguably pretty bullish. If you turn on the moving averages, you'll see we were above the moving averages. So Chris bought a $50 call option on the 13th of April, and um, that, that, ex that was a May expiration. So let me kind of go back to his notes really quick right here. Um, yep, so we had a 515 call. So that was a May expiration on AMD. And then the very next day had a good gap up. It ran up and he sold that call and took the profit. What's interesting about that is to think about number one, that he got in and got out quickly, capturing profit, capturing cash flow, and winning on that trade. The other really interesting thing to note is on that particular trade, he did hold those calls overnight, which is why he bought a little bit of a longer time frame, which was approximately a 
a month of time and he bought four of them. So he had a $190 risk on the trade and this is how Chris is shaping up so far for the month of April. Check it out, 5.23 hours for the week, 13 hours for April. I mean, that's a phenomenal, phenomenal record. It's a really, really good trade. And you can see a lot of that coming from just one nice trade on AMD, following the trend, following the closes, playing the strength, and just getting in and out. With option traders, a lot of people will hold far, far too long. And granted, those options really, really have exponentially grown, but you don't have to stress too hard because you're never gonna get out at the exact top and you're never gonna get in at the exact bottom. Your goal is to find some strong movers, really, really good direction. Once everything is played out, you have some charts and some information and some diagrams and some pieces of intel that you can look at and go, Yep, absolutely, this is why I'm gonna get into that trade. And even if he didn't get into that particular trade at, uh, at that time, on the close of April 13th, you can see AMD actually closed above all of the COVID high, right? So think about that. AMD, pretty big, broader market stock, was the best S&P performer last year, took out the COVID highs already a few days ago. So on the 13th of April. So when that happened, even if you weren't in calls earlier the, earlier in the day, could you have bought some bullish positions at the end of the day with that close because it's closing above this bearish candle, this bearish candle, this bearish candle, this bearish candle, specifically the bearish candle on March 3rd, which again was really all of that COVID-19 uh, data started becoming released and market absolutely dropped its, its face off. So that means everyone who was in short then got trapped. So now what I'm expecting on AMD is relatively simple. You have a pretty nice wave count, one, two, most likely gonna be a wave three and looking to get some type of wave four into 5180 at some point and then look to buy that dip and be long on AMD. Now, will that work out? Will that play out? Don't know yet, but I'm watching, waiting, and keeping an eye out for a dip buying opportunity on AMD. We do have a lot of swing trades out there that we are in, and we also had some day trades. I did take some day trades and lose. I had a losing day today. Uh, Roku was an attempted trade. I just got in a little too early, and I actually missed uh, an earlier trade on Roku, but that's fine. Really, really nice trade. Uh, this was a very, very profitable swing trade that we got into when it broke above this candle here. We got into it bullish and we got out the very, very next day. So again, just a quick two-day trade because of all this volatility. I did play uh, Roku and lost on it today for a day trade and lost an R. Um, got in bullish. Let's see, turn off the moving averages for a second. Um, attempted to get in bullish right here. When it took out this high wave candle, we set up a limit entry and we missed that low right here by 10 cents. So that would have put us up nicely on the day, but missed that trade by about 10 cents. So I took this breakout right here, inside candle, bearish candle. I took the break out of that and we were up nicely and then you know it rolled over and got stopped out. So no big deal there. Uh, here's Alibaba, B-A-B-A. -B -A. And Baba, I tried to play Baba bullish right down here um, as it came down into, you can kind of see this hammer candle. So played Baba bullish with that Morningstar reversal right there. And uh, bottom line, it simply didn't work. So morning star reversal didn't work, it didn't bounce, and it got stopped out. And it's okay, no big deal, all is good. But Square was a winner for most traders today. We did play Square, looking at this hammer candle right here, really nice hammers, and just pretty obvious how we played Square based on those hammers. Entry there, stop right there. And we had an ultimate target of 61.47, missed it by three pennies right at the end of the day, and had to close out with this bullish candle came in at 61.33. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Overall, nice little day, was a losing day. I'll be down about roughly 0.8 Rs on the day uh, overall, uh, but did close Spirit Airlines, took a symbol S-A-V-E for a profitable swing trade, mostly because it just did not move as aggressively as I had wanted it to, but I will continue to keep an eye on this one because I do know earnings is right around the corner. You did have a cute little gap today. I'm gonna to watch Spirit Airlines very closely on Monday for a potential break out above this candle, the stop below this candle. Even though I got out today, I might and most likely will watch it again on Monday or Tuesday of next week. 
Earnings season starts next week, folks. I will say this as humbly as I can, real life trading is growing and it's all because of you and your hard efforts and your work telling people that we are for real, we're doing our absolute best to help people, we are genuine and we absolutely care about your success. If anything, at least we can do that for you. One of my goals is to hit 400 before July 1st. So if you can help me with that, we have 358 traders who are part of our community right now. If you can help me hit 400, that would be just such a wonderful, incredible opportunity to then help even more people from all around the world. Again, this includes people in Australia, Brazil, Argentina, Germany, Spain, California, Hawaii, China. I mean, it's an incredible, wonderful opportunity. Be there or be a triangle. That's one of my goals. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate your time, your energy, your growth, your excitement for the markets. So many great things unfolding. You are incredible. I will see you next time, which will be Monday. And until then, love life, live life, and trade it. Bye. Okay, that was your Friday trade review. Thank you for watching. You are a majestically marvelous human being. I'll see you later. Bye.